Hi, and welcome to another Tabletop Talk and Draw. Today we're doing a creature, just a, I don't know, something out of my imagination. This is actually for my um, uh, Mercenaries, mer uh, Merchants, and Mystics campaign. Uh, I needed a monster to fall out of a dimensional portal and attack the players and something kind of... Uh, chaotic Cthulhu like Lovecraftian demonic so that's what I'm trying to do I won't you know it's kind of fun to just not have to worry about human anatomy and just sort of concentrate on structure and and just you know have fun and this is just a total like goofy thing so it is watercolor uh, I did the, the underpainting and watercolor and then I will finish it digitally um, so the watercolor is something that I can do pretty fast and I can be kind of loose with and that's what I want so you know you can see I did put some preliminary pencil down just as kind of a guideline of what I wanted to do and then I start slapping in some uh, tonal uh, watercolor here which is just a, a brown it's just a, that's all I used in this uh, underpainting so you know this is a good moment to say hey if you like this kind of content and you want to support me please subscribe please hit the like button please leave a comment if you want to see more stuff like this or something different you know let me know um what what floats your boat what kind of techniques you want to see utilized and and you know what kind of genres you want to see drawn and uh, i i'm going to be happy to try to fill those uh those requests um so yep yeah, i'm just you know, I use one brush. I have a very nice squirrel brush that I got recently that I'm very happy with because it can do a very, very thin line and it can slap down some really wide swaths of shapes as well. Um, so, yeah, just having fun kind of doing some weird ass kind of crab like critter that has no real logic to it. And that's fun to, you know, just sort of like, hey, I want to. I want to just play. I want to just make something horrendous and horrible looking. And hopefully I, I succeed and my players tonight will go, Ugh, what the heck was that? Um, and get a little a little concerned when this drops out of a dimensional portal that they have discovered. Um, they're investigating a lab uh, that has, you know, a long lost lab of, a, of the maker race, the sort of the, the godlike beings that walk the earth, you know, along early man and you know um there's no like elves or anything in this campaign it's a very sword and sorcery kind of a game so you know um they find a dead maker in a chair sort of like the scene from alien when they find that the giant alien with his um chest burst open um but except this this time the maker is looking up at the ceiling at this portal right and it's sort of a, a red and orange world you know sort of maybe analogous to mars but but sort of chaotic soup eldritch energies and whatnot and then because the the players are living and they've entered into this this sort of laboratory uh you know room this thing is going to drop on them and and you know a combat will ensue and sue because we are play testing and i need i need a scene where you know it's going to be a few players against something kind of large and and um uh d tough you know tougher than they are and see you know how that feels and does that work i mean we're doing a lot of you know tweaking with the play test so here it is it's scanned in um that's the finished product from terms of the underpainting the, the, the uh, watercolor so you know soon we'll we'll get into getting into doing the digital and here we've switched over to the digital and the first thing i do is i just take a, a green because it's going to stand out nicely against that brown red and i am just outlining it um so i can select just it and then you know i'll put a white board um a white piece behind it so we'll clean up all the stray little pencil lines any kind of dust on the paper um because I'm not the cleanest person uh, when it comes to sort of the margins of my paper. Sometimes my hands will get some paint on them and I'll smear it and stuff like that. But I don't really care because it's not in the frame of reference. It's not near what I'm doing. So I just go, I'll clean that up and, and post, you know. Um, so it takes a little bit of while to do that, that outline. But uh, I've done it. I put the, the white on there. And now what I do is I just lock all the pixels and that way I can just work or make selections um, 
on the areas that I want to, and uh, the background will stay pristine. Um, I'm playing around with a little bit of a, a, I did a gradient there just to, as a multiply layer, just to give me some, some basis, because I kind of want to work darks and lights at the same time. Um, um, you know, sort of orange and yellow highlights and more reddish uh, undertones and in the shadow areas because I wanted to support that idea of this thing fell from another dimension that was, you know, a lot of reds and oranges, right? You know, so I want to kind of support that. And I think that's, you know, a discussion that's very important for role-playing games is I think the art needs to support the text, whether it's a campaign setting or whether it's rules or whatever. Um, I think it's really important that, that, you know, you have got good art directors and you've got good artists and they, they marry the text and the image together. And um, because images can convey so much information so quickly and um, they can give you the wrong impression, you know, very easily. So you've got to make sure that, you know, if there's a section on encumbrance, we don't have someone, you know, dancing across a tightrope between two buildings. That doesn't make any sense. That should be in the, you know, the acrobatic or, you know, second story person, you know, skill list or something. You know, I think those, you know, you need the scenes to kind of reflect that. And in this game, I want, you know, a very sword and sorcery vibe. And I sort of think of, when I think of sword and sorcery, I certainly think of Conan and those covers from, you know, Frazetta, of course, which are lots of blacks and darks and, and, and yellows and stuff like that with these very, you know, interesting greens and purples and the, and the shadows and stuff like that. But I also think of like where Conan started and that was in the pulps, you know, and that's like back in the 1930s and they knew that a yellow cover would sell more. So they would have a lot of yellow in their cover art. And um, so I think of that sort of, you know, proto sword and sorcery is sword and sandal and and sword and sandal and sword and sorcery kind of go hand in hand and there's sort of that that vibe that you know those yellows those oranges those reds that they kind of that kind of come through and i think that evo evokes sword and sorcery a lot you know there's much smarter people than i am who can dial in what sword and sorcery really is i mean that's an ongoing discussion and a very interesting one to me but um, yeah, here I am. I'm doing some multiply layers. This is where I really start to, to push the reds. Um, I, I was kind of sneaking up on it for a while, and um, and it wasn't quite going the way I wanted. I wanted something a, a little bit more chromatic, a little bit brighter, and and you know more alien. And then we have to have you know the little highlights and and divots and whatnot, sort of to to suggest maybe a, a carapace or or you know a chitinous kind of organic material and you know that's that's pretty much it we're just flying along here having fun and we're finishing up this is going to be a quick one because i didn't have to worry about you know making sure that an arm looked like an arm i just could play around with it and and make something ugly and or you know you know sort of biomechanically something i don't know i hope you like it if you do uh let me know in the comments and i will talk to you later bye